men and women could have children after spinal cord injury. You may need some assistance from a professional, but it's absolutely possible. From the first date, it was really kind of understood that we both want family and it's something that's important to both of us. We did start the process, even really like before we got engaged, we knew we were going to get engaged and go down that road and really commit to each other. Dan started to say, let's get checked out, let's get tests done, let's go do our research. And I really appreciated that because that was good for me too, as it turns out, but I wouldn't have necessarily been the one to think about it. So when we talk about spinal cord injury and its effects on fertility, we're really focused on men because these injuries don't have an effect on female fertility, but the overwhelming majority of men are affected. Men often have ejaculatory issues, but even when you are able to get a sperm sample, often there's abnormalities in the semen parameters. They range in varying degrees of severity. So if you have somebody with just mild abnormalities in a semen analysis, the first line treatment is something called an IUI, intrauterine insemination. It's a two minute painless procedure. The day that a woman is ovulating, they bring the sperm specimen. It only takes about a minute to place a sperm into the uterus. So you have a concentrated sperm specimen. It's loaded into a syringe. The catheter is threaded into the uterus. This is an utterly painless procedure. So the catheter is very gentle. Most women don't even feel it. And normally what happens is sperm are deposited in the vagina. The key here is getting the sperm past the cervix. The cervix is a genuine barrier. So the estimate is that only about one in a million sperm make their way past the cervix into the uterus in close proximity to where fertilization is supposed to happen here in the fallopian tube. With an IUI, all the sperm are being placed into the uterus, so better chance that sperm and egg will meet and good things will happen. Now women with spinal cord injuries remain fertile. There are some things that we have to be aware of when women with spinal cord injuries are pregnant and having children. There are increased risks of urinary tract infections during pregnancy. There's issues we have to think about with changing of the body's positioning. If you have a spinal cord injury, having a baby is gonna change your body. It's gonna give you increased back pain or other issues. We also have to think about special medications people may be on after spinal cord injury and how they would interact. So it's really important if a woman is pregnant and has a spinal cord injury that she has a doctor that's experienced. Now for patients that have more severe abnormalities in the semen analysis, or for patients and men who are completely anejaculatory despite any intervention, you can actually have very good success rates by retrieving sperm directly from the testicle. But you never get enough sperm to do an IUI. What you have to do is you have to do in vitro fertilization. And with IVF, it's an extraordinarily powerful technique. It's the gold standard for bypassing a male factor. To do IVF well, you need lots of eggs. Human reproduction is inefficient, so you don't want to just retrieve one egg hope to get one embryo. The goal with IVF is really to get a dozen, 15 eggs. So in order to do that, you need injectable medications. They're given daily with a baby needle. So the, the woman does feel like a pincushion, but it's about a little over a week, eight days is average, to mature lots of eggs. Then under a 10 minute procedure, we retrieve the eggs. That's done with a needle under ultrasound guidance. You now have eggs in a dish. So normally when you do IVF for reasons other than a male factor, so let's say a woman has blocked tubes, you mix each egg with about 50 to 100,000 moving, perfectly shaped sperm, you get good fertilization and good outcomes. In men with very few perfectly shaped sperm, what you have to do is you have to add a procedure behind the scenes called ICSI, intracytoplasmic sperm injection, where you inject each sperm into each egg, and the success rates that you get doing IVF with ICSI are exactly the same as the success rates that you get doing IVF without ICSI for a non-male factor issue. So you can take a guy with zero sperm, retrieve sperm directly from the testicle, and essentially offer them the same success rates, and the success rates are then correlated to the typical parameters that IVF success rates are correlated to. 
It's been said that after 28 weeks, women should get monitored closely because they might not have sensation or they may have sensation. We don't know what's going to happen. And especially when we talk about dysreflexia, this is a very important issue for women with spinal cord injuries at T6 and above because dysreflexia can occur at the time of labor. This is something we have to be concerned about. At the time of labor and delivery, a woman can get dysreflexic and it can look very similar to preeclampsia, which is something that happens in able-bodied people. Now, the difference between the two is that women that have spinal cord injuries will only have the elevated blood pressure that occurs with dysreflexia at the time of contractions, whereas women with preeclampsia will have the elevated blood pressure throughout the time. So it's really important for women to be aware of these issues, have a doctor that can manage them closely, but afterwards they can be pregnant, they can have children, and there's many women with spinal cord injuries that have had children. Mm -hmm.